Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Country Music Made Me. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Please make sure you are liking, sharing, following, subscribing to us on whatever streaming service you are listening on. You can leave us a review, a rating, tell your friends, your family, your neighbors to come on over and have a listen. That support means the world to us each and every week. Now, today we're sitting down with Krista and Kendra, the sisters that make up the duo Tiger Lily. Now, they have been playing music together since they were 11 and 13. After high school, they moved to Nashville to see if they could give this country music thing a go. And earlier this year, while well, things came crashing together, they released their single. It went number one on iTunes and they received a record deal, really all in the span of five days. We talked to them about that and really their entire journey. So please enjoy our conversation with Krista and Kendra of Tiger Lily. Krista, before we start, yeah. I was wondering if you could set the energy of the room and if you could do the fast part of uh, Rap God by Eminem, if you could do that for us. To really uh, set the mood, I to set the energy. It. I can attempt it. Do you need it. a beat or something, Krista? Um, okay, let's see if I remember this. Get in the uh, zone. And then, and uh, uh, some llama, dim llama, you must even I'm a human. What I gotta do to get a 30 year superhuman, innovative, and a minute rubber so that anything you say is ricocheting off of me, and it'll glue to you. I'm devastating ever more than demonstrating how to give a mother truck an audience a feeling like it's levitating, never fading. And then I know the haters are forever waiting for them that they can sell it. Well, I'll be celebrating because <laughs> I know that because I know the get way to get them elevated. I make elevate music, you make elevator music. That was almost that was like 80 percent for me for like awesome. three hours. Three hours of- <laughs> Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Now That's actually a great way to going. start off the interview. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love that energy. And that gets us going. And now yes. let's talk about the show last night. How was the energy? The first time near your hometown, I think an hour and a half away from your hometown, pretty much as close as you can get, playing on the main stage at the fair. What yeah. was it like? It's, it was honestly a dream come true for us. Like you, you have all these bucket list things that probably a lot of other artists have like Madison Square Garden, Red Rocks, the Opry, you know, everything like that. But for us, we have like these unique little things as well on our bucket list. And so playing the main stage at the North Dakota State Fair has always been on that list because we grew up going to concerts there. Seen, I think Carrie Underwood was the first concert I ever attended at the North Dakota State Fair and Miranda and Taylor and Eric Church and all these people we went to these concerts growing up. And we played actually a side stage many, many years ago at at this fair, like four times a day. Um, and you met so many people, but yeah, last night was the first time we played the main stage and just with everything happening in this last year, it was just an amazing homecoming kind of celebration with everybody. And, uh, it was a Wednesday night. So we were like, Oh, there's, you know, it'll be like maybe a little kind of full maybe half. Yeah. And it was, packed so it was really just so much fun and um when we go back home to North Dakota they're so supportive of, of what we've been doing and so it's like really just friends and family we feel like we're looking out when into the audience so it's it's a really good time <laughs> and like I say it's about an hour and a half from actual home which is Hazen it's a very small community now is that as close as you have played to your home home in the past like couple of years or have you got to play even closer than that well we did uh we thought this would be really fun but we did a show in bismarck north dakota oh yeah yeah yeah. um we we said we're doing a free show free acoustic show about a month ago or yeah two months ago and we said we have a special surprise announcement and that's when we told everybody that we were going to be releasing our debut ep with Mm -hmm. monument records and I don't know, probably like 500 people yeah. showed up on a, like, I don't even remember it what was night a it was. Week yeah. night at this local brewery in Bismarck, North Dakota. That's about an hour from our hometown, but Minot and Bismarck. So those are like the two big cities close to where we grew up. So yeah, I would say Minot. Um, we just played uh, Medora, North Dakota, which is the big tourist part of North Dakota. It's like a wild west town, beautiful amphitheater. And again, it was just felt like friends and family. It's like the whole state of North Dakota. Yeah, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> and so every one of the shows in North Dakota, are your family there? So actually, well, our parents live in Nashville, outside of Nashville now, but they road tripped it up for this and they're actually going to Cheyenne tomorrow and they went to Medora. They are still like the roadies groupies from day one um, because they always say like, you know, we 
because our parents helped us for so long, like, you know, doing this whole thing. And now we're like, well, we, you know, we have so many people helping us, mom and dad, you, you guys can just chill and relax. And they're like, we're not going to miss out on these cool shows now. So we're road tripping. <laughs> um, so it's kind of fun that they, they get to come and just relax and enjoy the show now. And we don't put them to work, you know, too much. So <laughs> let's talk about that. Let's talk about that background, your parents. I know it's been said that you come from a musical home, but what did that look like? Were your parents musical or was it more just that they encouraged the musicality within you? Two. <laughs> no, yeah. two. So they, they particularly, they don't sing or play instruments, mm -hmm. but they were so supportive of mm -hmm. us singing. We grew up singing in, in church and local community events. Uh, our grandma forced Kendra to do, start doing like talent shows, um, the Colgate Country Showdowns. Well, she didn't enjoy the competition, Still but hate competitions to this day. <laughs> she caught the singing bug though, the, the performing Love bug you. on stage. That was the best part. Um, <laughs> but they, they've just been so supportive for so long. Our dad is a respiratory therapist. He learned how to do sound for our acoustic shows. Yeah. Our mom kind of acted as our, well, we were under 18 when we started Tiger Lily. So she would, you know, help us with Sign these contracts for shows um, kind of manage, uh, help us with our YouTube channel early yeah. on. So she kind of managed us for a while and our, our younger sister, we have a younger sister yeah. as well. And she helped run merch. So it was a yeah. whole family <laughs> affair, not technically a whole family band, but, uh, it was very much a team effort. Yeah. And I was going to ask about your younger sister. Did she not take that route of music necessarily? Does she ever feel left out? So she doesn't feel left out with the music thing ever. Um, cause we, uh, at the beginning, beginning of it, we wanted her to like Carly join us. Um, and you know, we would try to force her to do YouTube stuff with us and she never <laughs> wanted to, she, she did not want to be on stage. She did not want to be in front of a camera none of that. Um, you know, she probably feels, feels bad sometimes that we do because of this job, get to spend so much extra time together. So, and we like travel really cool places. Yeah. As well. So she's like, we, we went to LA a few weeks ago. She's like, oh, I want to go to LA. And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry, Carly, that you're missing this. So just some of that stuff that we're getting to experience together, we feel a little bit bad that, you know, Carly's not there with us. So we, we try to FaceTime her or, you know, make specific like sister days. So she doesn't feel, feel left out, but no, she's so supportive. And she's honestly like, so, so happy, um, with what we're doing. And, and, uh, I think someday, you know, if, if this progresses into a really big thing, which we obviously hope maybe she can just run our merch and she'll, she'll help us there. We can bring her on. Yeah. Bring her on tour still. <laughs> and before I ask my next question, I have to ask, is your grandpa still going strong? Yes. yes. Grandpa Bruce. Awesome. Love him. Has he taken <laughs> off the tiger lily hat yet? Never, no, never. To, I mean, to the end of time, he will wear that Tiger Lily hat. And the funny thing is, is so I, I, he still has our business cards. Like when, you know, I would know, I don't even think we have them anymore, but he still has Tiger Lily business cards and everywhere he goes, he hands them out. And sometimes we will get like DMS on Instagrams, like just met your grandpa. He's a, he put me on to you guys. He's a huge fan and great supporter. Cause like you have a new fan now. I'm like, go grandpa Bruce. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. And I wanted to ask about the family dynamic because you posted a video on TikTok, and there was the men in your life were doing a little tractor dance out in a field on some lawnmowers. And I was wondering if that is a true representation of what growing up was like with your family. Oh yeah. I mean, our family is, it's so much fun when we all get together, but we, you know, we have fun with social media. So when we're with our family, we try not to like, over it's not a force. Thing. It's not a force. <laughs> we don't try to like, if you don't want to be in a video, you don't have to, but it's honestly just like fun family bonding for mm -hmm. a lot of us. And my grandpa, like he when, loves being like in videos. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like grandpa, can you like, would you do a video for, you know, we're, we have a new song coming out. Would you want to do a video with us? And he's always like, Oh, I've got some new jokes up my sleeve. And like, he's all about it. So um, it's, it's honestly just fun and it creates a lot of fun memories for everybody. Mm -hmm. And too, then so. <laughs> he'll, which I think is the funniest part after we post the video with our grandpa in it, he'll like ask us repeatedly, how like, many, views? how many views did I get? Like, how many likes? Am I famous yet? Do they go viral? And uh, he like, he really, he he's made for the internet. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. That is hilarious. And now let's talk about your beginning as a sister duo. It was 11 and 13 is when you played your very first gig, paying gig together, right? 
That sounds about right. Because yeah. You were 10 when you started writing songs. So it would have been very, you probably know this more than we do. I don't even, it was right around that time. We had posted sure. it. Like it was a gas station in our hometown, Senex yeah. annual meeting. And they hired us from an hour of entertainment like live music and yeah. we yeah we weren't even tiger lily at that point so no, yeah. you're yeah we'll go yeah, with 11 and that sounds right yeah <laughs> well yeah that's what i was wondering what that first show was and how much you got paid for it a couple like, hundred bucks yeah, maybe, maybe. A couple hundred, which <laughs> to an 11 year old is a lot of money yeah you're like yeah. wow that can make the big bucks here man <laughs> <laughs> and then it was a couple of years after that that you did form tiger lily it was 14 and 16, I believe. And that's right around the time that you formed a band around yourself rather than just doing the acoustic thing. Now, I wanted to ask you how that felt and how that helped you develop on stage when you made that transition away from just acoustic and being able to really open up with a band. Well, it allowed us to play different kinds of shows. Yeah. Uh, We were starting to get hired for like corporate stuff, some fairs, but we found local players like in Bismarck. I'm pretty sure our drummer at the time was a kid about our age. So young mm-hmm. people. And we would practice in our high school band room. We would practice at our house. Um, and really, it was just us all figuring it out. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, a live show, if you have the full band, it's going to be like higher energy. Obviously, yeah. if you have all the, the guitars and the the drums and stuff. So we really learned how to do, you know, if we need to do a full on acoustic show, we can do that. If we need to do a full on band show, we can do that. Um, and it just having that ability creates more opportunity. Like Mm -hmm. we need a full band. Okay. We can do that. We need acoustic. Okay. We can do that. Um, we didn't want to limit any opportunity that came our way. And we started to play a lot of, um, we kind of, we had a song go like, semi-viral within the state of North Dakota. It was actually called North Dakota. It was about our state. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> real deep cut. I don't even think it's up anywhere anymore. Yeah, you gotta yeah I didn't find yeah. it. So. No. It's, on the, it's on the dark web somewhere. <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, and that allowed us to go tour the whole state of North Dakota and Midwest. And mm-hmm. we were the local openers for any big act that came into town. So North Dakota was really trusting a 14 and 16 year old girls to go basically perform at the highest level, which is really cool. So we're like, we do need a band. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we toured so heavily before moving to Nashville that it definitely helped us with stage present, entertaining, just Mm -hmm. like how to interact with each other on stage and just being having the confidence to move also. And when did the instruments come in? When did you start getting your hands on instruments? What age were you? Ooh, well, piano lessons. Yeah, I started playing piano in second grade and that really sparked my love for music and then you know writing honestly I started when I started writing it was on the piano and Krista did piano lessons too she didn't love it as much Mm -hmm. as I did I was like I'm not as good as her at piano so I'm quitting them finding something different (laughs) worked out great yeah so I picked up guitar (laughs) it worked out great and um you know it's actually sad because I don't play piano as much anymore because we basically do everything with the guitar um but yeah I, I the piano really sparked my love for music at an early age. And I'm, I'm very thankful that, um, you know, our mom put us in, in those lessons and just to have that knowledge of chords and structures and, um, being able to write music and have, you know, an instrument to do that with. Right. And Kendra, is it true that you play the saxophone? (laughs) You did your research. (laughs) Not well. Uh, I have not played probably in many, I actually think I sold it. The saxophone that is, Oh yeah. on. Um, but no, I played, I played saxophone in high but school band. You now, uh, you had to. Yeah. I mean, I probably like, it's like, if you play piano again, you kind of just pick back, you know, well, I, I was going to say on, on albums to come, well, we maybe hear some sax solos. I probably not. Be good. <laughs> <laughs> never say um, never, but probably no. not. Well, actually. So yeah, I played saxophone in high school and then Krista played percussion. We're both very, right. very, average at both of those yeah. instruments i don't like i'm not a drummer um i learned to you can beats. play some beats yeah yeah on, like a pep band music like four on the floor um guitar and piano are definitely the elevated uh instruments but you know us. it did help with um mm-hmm. and we'll get into this a little bit later our our whole our band director helped us with videos and and really was a huge part in our, mm-hmm. our music career but I'm like drumming to rhythm, rhythmic acoustic guitar actually translated really well because I'm so rhythm focused. Right. And then it all really helped in the theory and just like being very aware of tempo and time. So 
um, it all, it translated really well for, for us. Yeah. yeah I well, imagine the more <laughs> instruments, you know, the more you just know about the composition of music, right. As a whole. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the more knowledge you have in anything is going to help you. Um, I mean, like even when we started playing in downtown Nashville and we were playing these four hour cover gigs, it's like, you're exhausted from playing these, these covers, but at the same time, it's like your vocabulary of music and, and chord structures and what, you know, and, um, it really inspires you then when you go into to write your own music and you're like, you have this, this knowledge that you've never had before. So I think anything, it all helps. I, I do believe that. So. And now you talk about playing Nashville four times a week. Let's talk about that move. At what point did you kind of come to the realization that that is what you were going to do? <laughs> yeah, it wasn't an easy realization. I and don't think. <laughs> everyone always asks us to like, what made you form a band? And it's not, it's never been one moment in particular, but we kept doing Tiger Lily around North mm-hmm. Dakota, the Midwest. We kept like loving it. We got so addicted to performing and mm-hmm. we started getting paid to perform. We're like, we don't want to ever have to do anything it's else. True. It became an addiction. So like when we, when we moved to Nashville then, and we were going to college and um, we were like, well, we have to pay for college. We have to pay for rent. We have to pay for life. Like mm-hmm. this is right. adult. It was our first time, you know, like we in, lived with our parents before moving on. Yeah. And in North Dakota, we honestly got hired for 90 minute sets usually. And it was like, you know, a, a performer's dream. And so when we moved to Nashville, it was like, okay, how are we going to continue to make money still doing music? Cause that is what we want to do. No matter what, at the end of the day, we want to be making music and that's how we make a living. So, um, you know, we had some mentors and, uh, people saying, well, what have go down and like, you know, check out the Broadway seeing and, you know, see what it's all about. And, um, so, yeah, so we, we ended up, um, you know, going around talking to a, a few bars down there on Broadway in Nashville. <laughs> and I'm and, like 18, right? Yeah. There, you know, I'm not even able to drink at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we, we ended up getting hired by, by a bar and then, uh, you know, we were freaking out because we had to learn all these songs and you take requests and, um, you have it, to know a lot of material. Like right, the first, yeah. week, the first few weeks of doing it was, it was a lot like it was like a lot to take in and then you know now we we do these four hour sets and it's like oh it was easy <laughs> but it's just it's funny because we it was a really for me a terrifying time of like I'm going on stage I don't know all these lyrics to every one of these songs I might not I might take a request and not know it perfectly but it's like stepping into that zone of being uncomfortable and from that we have learned oh my gosh so so much and that's really made a huge difference in what tirely is and, and who we are right you know to this day and um yeah but it is it's hard hard work anyone who plays downtown nashville on broadway those four hour shifts they're working hard they're working hard they're hustling um kudos you know to all of them and it, it's a it's a grind for sure if 2020 wouldn't have happened and you would have just continued that grind of playing four times a week things could have looked very different coming into 2021 I think they would have. Yeah. Honestly, because by the time you're done and this just shows it's like, it's hard. Some you're, sometimes you're like, I'm working so hard and what can I, you know, what can I do more to, to make this work? And that's how we felt sometimes, you know, when we were just exhausted from playing all those shows, like, what aren't we doing? Like what we are, (laughs) we're trying to do everything we can at this point. And we had good social media, but you know, once we had time to like really just dig in and, and create content, for you know tiktok and, and reels and Facebook. and i had to force her to join tiktok oh yeah she oh, did yeah. <laughs> i did so it's like i don't know i yeah at the end of it it was just like a big silver lining for us to have that time um and things definitely would have turned out to be because when you're at that exhausted you're like i have no voice i don't want to sit down and sing and make all this content because you're just your voice is so tired and so um probably not so I'm just like, this is a universe thing because honestly, you can't, mm-hmm. you can't plan anything and, and timing is everything. And you just have to really trust if you're, you know, doing everything you think you can and um, you have to trust the journey at the end of the day. Right. And now let's talk about somebody does. That was your, you know, your takeoff point. When did that song come to fruition? When did you write it? Was it late in 2020? 
Yeah, it was, it was in 20, like September. Yeah, maybe, fall or, 2020. It was in the fall. It's almost a year old. I know. I don't have the exact date mm-hmm. of when we wrote it in my mind, but um, it was us and our friend Zarni Tibet, who we've, you know, written with many, many, many songs with her. And she's just honestly a friend of ours, but she's an amazing writer. And I, I don't know, we were just writing a lot at that point and and we went into this right and we were like oh, like not feeling it I think that would particular day it was like dreary outside and every you know the world seems like it's crashing down and you're just like do people even care about any of this anymore like do right. people want to hear a breakup song do people want to hear a love song like obviously they they are needed and people yes we need those but it was like that day we were like what? like does that even matter right what now do people want to hear like and then zarni's like well like think about it maybe think about it this way like if if you guys have one you know one thing to say right now to the world like what is it and you know we just kept saying i don't know who needs to hear this but somebody does and then you know we got into the like just how how lonely of a year it was for so many people and still to this day it's like i think just with the, with the age we're in and social media and everything, it's like people just get in this headspace of like, they're not good enough. Yeah, they don't matter. It's just lonely. And, and so this song was really just to serve as a reminder, um, to people have, of how much they matter and how beautiful they are. And, uh, we, we really did not expect, like, uh, we've had a few questions, like, did you guys write this song for TikTok? And it was absolutely right. not that way. Like, no, that was not in, our, in minds our minds at all. And, I mean, thankfully, like worked out to where it, it spoke to a lot of people through that. Um, but yeah, it was just like, it really was just a reminder and a big hug to people. But when we, you know, put the first little teaser out and it went just nuts, it completely viral on reels. Actually, it went more viral than TikTok. Oh, okay. TikTok went viral too. Um, but so it, yeah, it just went crazy. Um, and still to this day, like we, uh, it just actually played on the Bobby Bones show, which is super <laughs> cool. Um, and we put a video of us just reacting to it on Facebook and it has like 2.2 million views, I think on nice. Facebook and like over 500,000 <laughs> on TikTok. And we're like, this is literally, this is crazy. So this song just keeps speaking to so many people, which mm-hmm. is amazing. Cause we, uh, we were, we did release a project uh, about a month ago and it five songs. And we're like, if there's a song that we want to get out to people and speak to people, it is somebody yeah, does for sure. Like we're, if any of these songs is, you know, is the one to take off, we're, we're really happy that it is somebody does. Cause it's such a good message that everyone obviously needs to hear. I mean, we need to hear it as well some days. And, um, just the stories that people have shared with us through that song is, is incredible. And so, um, yeah, somebody does, is like our little little (laughs) (laughs) go-getter. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the timeline because this, as it appears on social media, the timeline is kind of crazy because on February 20th of this year, you posted that you were getting to release somebody does, and you needed everyone to pre-save it so that it would do well when it hit the charts on February 23rd, you heard the song on the radio for the very first time on 103.3 Nash. On February 24th, you release the song. It goes number one on iTunes, on the country and all genre charts. And then on February 25th, you post a video of being offered a deal with Monument. So within a five-day span, you say you're going to release a song, you release a song, and you have a record deal. Like, what was that five days a week like for you guys? Yeah, so I mean, crazy. We had so we had talked to Monument like two years prior to actually um, now being with signed with Monument, and so we kind of knew them, and we they weren't really signing anyone more when we had met with them and and sang for them, um, but kind of like later kept in touch and then you know with somebody well actually so so katie introduced shane to us and so shane was like he was just you know he's awesome and he wanted to produce us so he produced somebody does and a bunch of these tracks and then you know somebody does blew up and obviously signed to to monument which is our dream team like monument is you know a co-venture with sony and then also with Shane McAnally and Jason Owen, which is perfect for us because it's more a little more boutique and uh, they're very artist friendly. Right. And uh, if you look at any of you know their roster, it's super just 
great, great artists and super cool uh, music. So when somebody has released and we're getting, you know, an offer from like our dream label in town, this is like, this, where are the red flags? This is too good to be right? true. Like, <laughs> Something has to be wrong right, right. now. What's We're the like, catch? What is what's it? Catch? Yeah, what's the catch? Um, but no, it honestly was just the perfect fit. And and again, it's like all about timing and just trusting that when it's supposed to happen, it will. Because you know, we had formed that relationship two years prior. Um, you know, and it took us Shane producing us and Katie knowing us from the and it just all coming together at that very moment. But getting that call from Katie, um, you know, offers offering us that deal. It was like, I haven't watched that video in forever, but whenever I watch the video, I just like start crying because it we really in that moment, it was like a huge, huge goal of ours, a huge dream of ours. Um, and, you know, something we'd worked for for so long really had come true in that in that moment. And it was like, thank you. Thank you, God. Like we were just like, thank, like, I don't know. Like what are the, mm -hmm. still, we were like, is this real? Like what, mm -hmm. what is the catch? But, um, you know, it's, it's just been amazing. And I like, yeah, I don't even know what to say because it was just the most surreal week mm -hmm. ever. Like we will never forget that week and, and just the reaction to that. So. And you talked about Shane helping produce the album and Lewis Newman co-produced as well. Now, how long does your relationship with him go back? So Louie, we go way, 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 way back. Um, so he, he also manages us. Yes. So he is married to um, an artist named Gwen Sebastian, who Gwen tours with Miranda Lambert full time. I saw in an interview like way back when, when you first started Tiger Lily, you, you had mentioned her as an influence. And so I was wondering if that was a full circle moment when you got to work with Lewis and, and met her. Yeah. So that's, that's our whole connection is through Gwen because she's from North Dakota as well as we are, we're from, we're basically like what, 45 minutes from each other where we grew up. Um, but we opened a show for her in our hometown of Hazen, North Dakota. What, like the eight, more, nine the years years ago. Oh, yeah. really? And yeah. Louie was there with her and, you know, we had d done our thing and, and performed and, you know, he just kind of like, was like, you know, if you, if you girls ever need anything in Nashville, let us know. If you have any um, questions, like super nice. Uh -huh. if we, we'll show you around the town if you, if you ever want to come down. So he was always just like, you know, giving us advice. And, um, you know, down the road, we, we ended up just really trusting him and, and, and Gwen and, and their vision and direction. And it, it's, it's hard to find people you really trust mm -hmm. in, in Nashville. And so they, they become, became our like Nashville um, uh, fam. And so, and he actually, um, before moving to Nashville too, like he, Louie had produced two EPs on us, mm -hmm. um, before even moving. So I feel like okay. he also gave us the confidence to move down here. You know, we didn't know that many people, but we knew at least two people mm -hmm. and just really explained to like, if you want to take this one step further, if you really want the huge, like, what's your goal? And we're like, you know, sell out arenas. That's our goal. <laughs> reach as many people as possible. He's like, well, you need to get to Nashville. That's the first mm -hmm. part of that is how you reach that. And like, how do you get on radio? It's usually they're signing with a label and then it's this whole process, but, um, he's, he's been so great to work with. And the balance of Louie and Shane co-producing was mm -hmm. like perfect because Louie already had worked with us several times. Mm -hmm. right. He knows us so well. He knows our voices. He knows our style. He knows mm -hmm. what we would, would and wouldn't be comfortable, comfortable with. And then, so he's like, you know, homeboy, we've been working with him <laughs> for a while. And then Shane comes on as, you know, massive producer, yeah. like super respected by everyone. You're like, has worked with Casey Musgraves, Old Dominion, Midland, you know, pretty much everyone. Yeah. So he brings the, um, the experience, yeah. the Nashville flair, and also just the, yeah. Um, the talent as well with, with Louie and he, he was so good about helping us choose songs and producing them in a way that still felt like very much us, but also just took it to the next level as well. Um, but he was also good about like not trying to change what we do, just taking the best part of what Tiger Lily is and amplifying it. Right. And you talk about that production side. I saw on social is that my thing, you kind of posted a video of the writing process, the production process, and then the finished song. Now you have recorded albums and EPs in the past, so you know what that is like. But when you see that on this album and realizing that this is the music 
that is ultimately going to take you somewhere. Does it have a different feeling when you look back on that process than it does on older music? Yeah, no, for, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all exciting and fun. Our favorite part is being in the studio and seeing it come together, but we knew there was something different yeah. and special and the level that it was produced at and the players, um, we, we for sure felt a different kind of magic with this, you know, pr- w- with this music and, um, th- we love the process of, of writing. I think people don't necessarily know, you know, what all, what all goes into that. And it's like, you write the song and then, um, probably demo it. And then you get into the studio to have the band track everything. And then you go in and do a hundred vocal takes. And then, um, then it's, you know, mixed and mastered. And then, 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 you know, once the song's finally complete, then you do all the marketing videos, photos for it, and then you have to promote it. It's just, you know, it's a, it's a process. So when people say like, when are you coming out with new music? It, it takes a, for a lot of artists, it takes a long, you know, it takes a while to, from start to finish mm-hmm. to get and all that done. you don't want to rush it. You don't want to rush it. Right. It's, it's like your like little song baby is coming out into the world and um, they're permanent too. So you want to make sure they're exactly how you want them. Yeah. I feel, I feel like with this project for the first time, we really felt like, oh, this is really, really showcasing uh, who we are as artists, as people, you know, as sisters, where we come from. It kind of embodied all of those things. And so I think that's why this one in particular was extra special and, you know, getting to work with Shane was always a dream of ours. So it's like, we're getting to work with, you know, people that we've dreamed of working with for a long time. And so that definitely added some, some extra flair as Krista would say too. (laughs) That is awesome. And I wanted to ask you about your charity work because in the past you have done a lot with charity, with playing at events and supporting charities. So how important is that for you guys? Oh, super important. I, we always say like, we have these, you know, gifts and if we're not using them for good, basically what are we doing? And so, you know, we don't have all the money in the world, you know, we, we can't do a lot of those types of things, but what we do have is, you know, our voices. And so if we can help out, uh, you know, in that, in that department, obviously we love to do that, but mm-hmm. no, it's so, you, it just, you I don't have know. To give, like you have to give back. It's like, that's the best thing apart uh, about this is, um, you know, being at those events and, and really truly feeling like, okay, I am making a, a difference in this world for the better and doing something good with the gifts I've been given. And um, that's what it's all about for sure. And one of the legacies as well that you have over the past, I think it was six months is Kendra, your husband in your TikTok videos, learning <laughs> some TikTok dances. Now I wanted to ask about your relationship with him. Cause I believe it's 11 years or coming up on 12 years this year, maybe. So what has it been like to have him there throughout this entire journey with you? Oh, I, yeah. So we've been together. Yeah. 11 years Mar- it- married for almost two. Um, so we, we met in, in middle school back in North Dakota. So we're from the same hometown, but he, it's been really cool because he's got to watch this journey unfold from start to, to now. And, um, you know, to him, he is like, number one fanboy and but but also like it's just my job it's just what I do it's not like he's like putting pressure on me to you know be my best at all times like he's the person that I can not be my best in front of too as well but he loves to do like the TikTok stuff. So honestly, like, do you force him to do those? We're like, no, he, him, (laughs) Krista. So him and Krista actually can get the dances down way fast. Like I cannot, cannot do the dances. And so we posted, um, Walker Hayes has a song going viral right now called fancy. Like, yeah. And we did a, we did the dance to it and we practiced it for so long. And at the end of it, I was like, I literally look so bad doing this dance. You guys start it and I'll jump in at the end. But no, he's, he's, he loves, and especially during, cause he was self-employed um, during the pandemic and he's a photographer. And so we, all three of us were like, well, let's make TikTok. Well, we don't have a lot going on right now. So, it, you know, it was just kind of fun to pass time, but no, he's, he's awesome. Love him very, very much. And uh, he's a tirely, you know, fan club member for life. Obviously, he, he actually so. uh, does all our photos as well. Yeah. Too. Oh, nice. he, he took our, like our EP cover. He took that photo. Um, so it's fun that, you know, he's not musically artistic at all. Uh, 
don't tell him I said that. <laughs> we won't go this part. Um, but he's very creative. And so it's fun to have him involved, you know, in, in our career and that side of it too. And for me, it makes me super comfortable whenever we have to do a, a photo shoot or anything like that to have him on, on that side. It's like, things, Jared, so. get my good side. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you already know my good angles. And like, he'll be honest with me to where it's like, am I going to like my pose and that? And he'll be like, mm, probably not. And be like, okay, let me change. Like, it's just e- really easy communication, which is super nice mm-hmm. um, because, you know, photo shoots and stuff like that can be kind of like a lot of, a lot of pressure sometimes. Yeah. I so, bet, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's, that's super nice, but I could talk about Jared all day long. So <laughs> <laughs> and you post a lot of content, basically just showing where you've come from. And so is that important for you to continually sort of look back and remember where you did come from and remember what has happened along this journey up to this point? Yeah, yeah we get super like emotional about that just because we have been doing this, you know, as sisters mm-hmm. for so long and we did so much back in North Dakota. And, and when we had nothing going on, like they support, a lot of people supported us from the beginning. So I don't know, we feel like we need to share all these special moments with the people, you know, who have supported us for so long and all the new mm-hmm. people, you know, coming in and, and supporting us now. Um, we really do feel like it's a, it's definitely a, a team, team effort. effort for it's, sure. So it's really fun for us to keep people updated and they're all part of the journey. I uh, mean, that's a huge reason, like not to interrupt, but why we even, you know, got signed and things like that. It's cause like, Oh, you have all these people, people care supporting about you and, you know, caring about your music. So we, do not take that for granted. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. People all. will ask us like, Oh, or, or tell us, Oh, don't you don't forget about where you come from or don't forget about North Dakota. It's like, we, it's not, that's not when possible. That? <laughs> no, like, that literally will never happen. It's yeah. not possible for us to forget where we come from. So. Yeah. And with all that's happened over the past six months, looking forward, what are the next goals that you have after accomplishing so much in the past six months, what is next that you want to accomplish? Yeah. Uh, short term, um, go in and record another project, go land a tour and play the Opry is my, my next three immediate goals. <laughs> but um, we just have, you know, reached so many more new people in the past six months. Just keep like reaching new people and meeting new people. Keep traveling with music. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's anything I'm missing. Just, just really, we're just, uh, if anything we've learned is like all the stuff that's happened is it was so unplanned. So we're trying to just keep planting seeds and, you know, when things sprout out and pop up that we can, you know, enjoy it. So I've never used that analogy before, but that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I recall that one. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, congratulations on all the success and all that you've seen happen over the past six months. Like I say, it's pretty cool to see. Um, people can check out the new EP now everywhere. I know you have tour dates that are on your webpage that people can go check out and then keep an eye on your social media for all the crazy stuff that you got going on there as well, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. All under Tiger Lily. Thank you guys once again so much for listening and be sure to check out their new EP wherever you stream your music. Please also make sure to like, share, follow, subscribe to us on whatever streaming service you are listening on and give us a review, a rating, tell your friends, your family, your neighbors to come on over and have a listen. That support means the world. Thanks once again for listening and we'll see you next time on Country Music Made Me. (laughs) 